welcome back to you all in the last lecture we have uh, seen uh, roms their type of uh, roms and uh, we have discussed how we can implement functions with the help of roms okay today we are going to talk about combinational plds and uh, that p rom p rom in which we have configured that by our own to implement a function that is also one of a kind of pld's because that was that was programmable and we can program that for designing functions that is why it is also a pld okay now let's see what are the other kinds of pld and if you remember in a prom i have shown to you that it was having a fixed array of and gate and programmable or array okay so now let's have a look on the other plds first let's uh, mean fix and array decoder it is your can you guess what it is and programmable or array i just told you it is your prom so this is how you will be giving input and you will be taking output from or array and this is nothing but your programmable read only memory what we have studied okay what are the other kinds if you have got a programmable and array and fix or array okay in this case what will happen then it will be considered as pal programmable array logic okay in this case in programmable array logic what will happen there the and array will be programmable and or array will be fixed okay so you can say that it is just uh, reverse of prom see now next is your uh, programmable and array and programmable or array so in this case we are having both the arrays programmable we can program both the arrays okay so this kind of uh, pld's uh, programmable logic devices are known as pa sorry pla okay programmable logic array so in this lecture we will talking about uh, uh, pal and pla okay as we have already discussed about pro so uh, we won't talk about that so uh, let's see uh, in, at the first we are going to talk about pla okay so the pla is uh, similar in concept to prom but in the case of prom we were having uh, that decoder and uh, inside the decoder there were and gates only and that was fixed okay so and array was fixed in the case of prom but in this case rather having decoder we are having an flexible array of and gate okay and with that flexible array of and gate we can have any product term and rest of the things like uh, or array will remain as it is that can be programmed and we can uh, use that for solving the purpose okay for achieving any combination or or operation of the product terms so uh, i'm just first going to explain the designing of that uh, uh, pla so the first thing in the designing is the this buffer inverter combination okay as you can see here you can have like uh, it is not normal inverter it is buffer inverter so with the help of this you can get uh, the la, mean the variable the true value and the complemented value as well so let's say i have got three variables a b c so i can have a and a bar both with this buffer inverter combination okay now after having these inputs i am going to have my and array as i have told you in this case and array is also programmable so i have got these four and gates and as you can see here i have got a mesh so i can program this mesh according to my requirement okay now each input and its complement are connected to the input of each and gate and with the help of these we can generate any product term okay now the output of and gate are to be connected with or gate okay see the output of uh, connected with the or gate and with the connections or uh, making appropriate connections we can add or perform or operation of any of the product term okay so 
this is a little addition in some of the description this uh, XOR gates are not shown but uh, I have shown it to you so you can go through that that's very easy I mean uh, the purpose of these XOR gate is to get uh, the true value or complemented value in some cases what happens that uh, we want the complemented value of the function so we will use that let's see how see here the output of OR gates goes to an XOR gate where the other input of the XOR gates are connected to 0 or 1 or may be connected to 0 or 1 okay if you want the true value of the function then you have to connect the other value other input of XOR by 0 and if you want the complement of the function then you have to connect the other input of XOR by 1 you can refer that description I have written here the output inverted when the XOR input is connected to 1 okay see you can solve this uh, you can prove this logic also that's very easy so here I have made this additional connection like if I want to connect the input of my uh, one input of my XOR by 0 then I will select uh, the first row and if I want to connect my input uh, my output with uh, uh, that uh, uh, one then I will choose the second row okay so now let's talk about the implementation using PLA that's very easy first uh, uh, proceed um, before proceeding to the implementation first we have to define the size of PLA okay so how it will be defined there is there are something you uh, uh, mean some important uh, like you can say as a mean consideration for defining the size of the PLA first is number of input variables okay with the help of number uh, uh, input variables you will define the total number of buffer inverter you want okay let's say if you you have got a function which is uh, having three distinct variable okay in that case how many uh, buffer inverter you need three simple okay now total number of distinct product terms that is something important in the case of PLA you have to refer the total number of distinct product term as in this case if you refer f1 and f2 so f1 is uh, f1 and f2 both are having a term common that ac is common in both of them now so total distinct uh, uh, product terms are four in this case actual product terms are five but as uh, ac is common to both the function that is why total distinct uh, uh, product terms are 4 and from that uh, product terms we will define the required number of AND gates okay now the total number of outputs or functions will define the number of OR gates okay so in this case as I have already discussed that uh, number of input variables are a b c that is 3 so total number of buffer inverters will be 3 and uh, total number of distinct product terms are 4 otherwise product terms are 5 but distinct product terms are 4 that is why number of AND gates will be 4 and total number of outputs or the functions are 2 only so that is why I will have 2 OR gates okay now let's uh, the okay before heading toward the main implementation there is another thing that is known as pro PLA programming progra programming table okay so uh, th there is nothing like uh, to explain first I have listed the all the distinct product terms okay and I have numbered them then I have written the corresponding inputs so let's first talk about uh, the first row okay in the first row I have got a b bar so you, uh, you can very easily understand uh, understood that the value of input if I have got a b bar then what does it mean it means that I want the true value of a that is why I have written 1 under a and uh, I want complemented value of b that is why I have written a 0 under b and I don't want c that is why I have written a dash under c okay similarly uh, for the product term a c I want a and c 
and I don't want B that is why I have written 1 under A and 1 under C and I have not written anything or I have marked a dash under B. Similarly you can proceed further and you can write the value of the variables. Now here in the output I have got true and complemented outputs. Why? Because I want true value of F1 but I want complemented value of F2. That is why I have written F2 under complemented output and I have written F F1 under the true output. Okay. Now the product terms what I need in F1 is A B dash A C and A bar B C dash. I don't need B C that is why I have not included that B C in my list and I have written a dash and, uh, in front of that. Similarly for F2, I don't want AB bar, that is why I have written a dash over here. I want AC and BC and uh, so I have written 1 1 over there and I also don't want A bar BC bar, that is why I have also excluded that. So yeah, I hope it is clear to you all how I have written F1 and F2 uh, under true value or complemented value because I need F2 complement of f2 no? that is why uh, not complement of f2 actually i want complement of ac plus bc that is why in output uh, uh, column i have written it under complement uh, uh, you can say head okay now now let's see how will we will implement that so i have got uh, the PLA circuit I have just explained to you okay now let's make the appropriate connections okay uh, as I have told you all that in this case we can uh, mean make the desired connections by uh, our own uh, and we can realize any given combinational circuits okay this is the advantage of PLA so the first uh, let's see the function what we want to implement so I have just fetched that table here so the first product I want to implement is a b bar okay how will you do that first you have to select a and then you have to select b bar see I have did the same I have selected first column okay that is corresponding to a and then I have selected the fourth column that is corresponding to b dash and at the in mean output of this AND gate you will be getting a b bar similarly for ac also i have selected ac and at the output of AND gate i will be getting ac now for bc i have selected b and c similar and at the output of AND gate i will be getting bc similarly you can complete rest of the connections okay and here you will be getting a bar b c bar now once I have got these product terms, then uh, which of uh, them should be connected with the OR gates? So first time if I am talking about F1, so in F1 I need AB bar, AC and A bar, B, C bar. Okay, so I will make the desired connections like I have connected AB bar for F1 I have connected AC and I have connected A bar BC I have not connected BC in this case okay what else I want the true value of this function so the XOR gate which is connected with this output the other input of this XOR gate is to be connected with 0 see here I have connected the other input of XOR gate with 0 and here I will be getting my F1 similarly for F2 I need AC and BC only that is why I will connect uh, the output of AND gates with the uh, uh, these uh, inputs of OR gates see I have connected AC and BC only for F2 now I have I want complemented value of that that is why I will select uh, or I will connect the other input of this XOR gate by 1. Now at the F2 you will be getting the complemented value of this function. So that is how you can you implement any function using PLA logic. Okay. So the last kind of uh, PLD we are going to discuss today is programmable array logic. Okay. And the only difference in this case that uh, we have uh, got a fixed OR array. Okay. So obviously it will be less flexible but easy to design hmm? because we don't have to program OR array that is fixed. We have to simply program R in that uh, AND array. Okay. So 
uh, let's say if we are taking simply an example only and with the example i will illustrate the procedure because it's something very easy you can do it you know, by your own itself okay so let's say again the design procedure is simple we'll have th these buffers and uh, we'll connect uh, all input variables with them and uh, i have got this uh, array you can say okay now as you can see there is no scope of programming for the or arrays okay we can program our and arrays as we did uh, earlier but uh, there is no scope of programming our or arrays okay this is important to note so if there are a few more important things each input has a buffer inverter gate and each output is generated by a fixed or gate the, there are three sections in the unit in this particular unit there are three section each composed of and or and or array that is three wide what do you mean by three wide uh, by three void I mean that there are three AND gates okay the term used to indicate that there are three programmable AND gates in each section and one fixed OR gate so uh, with the help of this entire uh, this particular PAL we can implement a function which is having three different uh, we can implement a function you can say yeah, which is having three uh, mean functions f1 f2 f3 like this okay or we can realize any combinational circuit which is having three distinct functions okay if you want to uh, realize any combinational circuit which uh, is having more than three functions then uh, you have to go for uh, bigger size is that okay now let's see how will we design the uh, or how will we implement that okay so again the same procedure will follow what the the first product term i want is ab bar so i will make the desired connection accordingly next is i want ac so i will make the desired connection next i want a bar b c bar that is how i made that connection also so now these all are already connected to the input of or gate so the output of or gate will represent represent you f1 similarly if you want ac and bc then i have made the connections for a and c and this output of this and gate will be giving you product of these two or ac similarly for bc i have connected b and c and the output of this or gate will, uh, sorry and gate will give you bc now in this case these arrays are fixed or the choice of and gates are also fixed number of all and gates are also fixed so although we are not going to use this and gate okay but we can't remove that so it will remain as it is but we'll be just for representation i put a cross here that i am not using this and gate and the output of this uh, or gate will give you the function f2 furthermore this f3 is also not or not f3 this uh, third or gate is not also not used here because we have got only two functions that is why i will put a cross over there also this is how you have realized the function using or sorry pal there is one more important thing like uh, let's say if uh, you want to realize a function which is having more than four more than three product terms okay so there are ways by which we can do that but uh, i think uh, as of now it is okay for you to go with these explanations only uh, now the questions so what you may face in examination are not always easy or simple or straightforward like in this case you are given with a function itself okay and you are realizing or implementing that function with the help of pla and pal but uh, you may be given uh, a function and the function may be defined with the help of values of min terms only okay let's say a function is defined to you f a b c a function of a b c and having certain min terms like 1 2 6 7 and something like that then how will you implement that for implementing that you have to find the boolean expression and how will you find the boolean expression from the given set of min terms by simply going through the k map okay so you have to remember I mean you don't have to forget the combinational uh, logics what you have stu studied as of now so if you remember that those things then you can do these things very easily there is uh, one more important illustration is that in the case of pla 
we were talking about distinct product term okay but here we don't have to do anything with distinct product term if uh, like uh, for example in this case this is your ac and this is your ac that was i mean falling in both the functions but uh, as these arrays are fixed okay and there is no scope that i can take this ac from the previous one to the input of uh, this or gate i can't do that that is why we don't bother about the distinct uh, or product terms you have to consider all the product terms uh, i mean in each function okay so that is all for the day okay uh, in fact that is all for the memory itself so thank you very much we'll see you with the next topics